I'm Marty Stauffer. With the first warm rains of the year, frogs and toads emerge from their winter sleep to herald the new season. Their rhythmic chorus is synonymous with springtime. Yet they're perhaps best known for their jumping ability. Their long, powerful legs allow them to jump many times their own body length. Frogs and toads are amphibians. It was this primitive group of vertebrates which first colonized the land. As a result, they've evolved remarkable adaptations for life both in and out of water. Join me as we explore the wet kingdom of the Prince of the Pond. Few places in North America are as charged with life as the undisturbed margins of our freshwater lakes and ponds. Though sometimes inhospitable places for humans, they provide important havens for an enormous diversity of plant and animal life. Over 300 million years ago, much of the earth was covered with water, but vast oceans and swampy areas were drying up. Out of necessity, some fish underwent an amazing transformation. Over the course of thousands of years, they began breathing with lungs. These air-breathing animals are called amphibians. The most familiar are frogs. The word amphibian is Greek. Translated, it means living both in water and on land. These early amphibians are believed to be the ancestors of all land vertebrates. The largest and most aquatic frog in North America is the bullfrog, found along ponds, lakes, reservoirs, and large rivers. Although it's native to the eastern United States, it's been introduced to much of North America. The bullfrog is the champion jumper in the frog family, able to leap 20 times its own length. Sometimes bullfrogs and their amphibian relatives are confused with another ancient order of life, the reptiles. But there are some obvious differences between the two. Some reptiles live in desert environments far from water, like the granite spiny lizard of the American Southwest. Frogs, on the other hand, are never far from water. A frog's eardrum is the flat, oval disc behind the eye. While the lizard's ears are internal, with a somewhat well-disguised opening on the surface. Frogs have clawless feet that are sometimes webbed. Lizards have claws and no webbing. With its huge eyes, a frog face is unforgettable. The lizard has small eyes, set on the sides of its head.
A frog's eyes are enormous by comparison. Amazingly, frogs absorb water and oxygen through their smooth, moist skin. The dry, overlapping scales of the lizard are only for protection. Lizards lay eggs on land, and their young are mirror images of their parents. Another amphibian, the toad, is as dependent on water for egg laying as the frog. But the bumpy skinned toad can live farther from water. Toads and frogs were the first creatures in nature to have their own voices. Most species of frogs are clustered in the moister regions of our country. In the east, the bell-like songs of the tiny peepers are synonymous with spring, as welcome as the return of the migratory birds. In the southeast, a secretive bronze frog begins calling from the inaccessible shelter of a limestone sink. Some frogs have adopted more unusual survival strategies. The four-eyed frog turns its back when threatened, displaying two small swellings that look like a pair of huge and hopefully frightening eyes. From New England to the Arctic Circle, spring triggers the explosive breeding rituals of gregarious wood frogs. 3,000 miles away, the ancient music of the frogs heralds the beginning of spring in California. Pacific tree frogs, about the size of silver dollars, gather in low bushes to choose mates. The males croon away while the females watch passively or busy themselves with shedding and eating their skin. In some species, molting may be a daily occurrence. Male frogs are equipped with vocal cords and vocal sacs, which they inflate to attract a mate. Females tend to be voiceless. Most tree frogs are nocturnal, like the bird-voiced tree frog of the southeast. At night, these diminutive singers descend from the treetops to fill the night sky with song. Our largest tree frog is an immigrant. The Cuban tree frog hitched a ride on a load of produce to Key West in the early 1900s and then migrated to the southern Florida peninsula. At just over two inches, the gray tree frog is the largest tree frog of the Northeast and one of the best camouflaged. Tree frogs like these green tree frogs don't have webbed hind feet. They have sticky toe pads for clinging to the slickest of surfaces. The explosive calls of the barking tree frogs sound like the yapping of small dogs they're our largest native tree frog, at about two and a half inches long. As a boy in Arkansas, I can remember falling asleep to a chorus of frog calls. Because different species lived around our home, their voices blended into a strange symphony of sound. The first frog I think I ever saw was America's most common, the leopard frog. In spring, the male advertises for a female, calling from a traditional mating pond. His voice sounds a little like a snore, but his croaks attract a female to the pond. Even though she's ready to reproduce, the female gives her suitor a merry chase.
Leopard frogs live mainly on land. This may be their only return to the water all year long. The female leopard frog finally accepts the advances of the male, allowing him to wrap his front legs around her body, a behavior called amplexus that stimulates egg laying. Once the female releases her mass of eggs, the male quickly covers them with his sperm. Then both parents desert the offspring. eggs may be laid, most no bigger than the periods on a page, and vulnerable to a host of predators like water insects, fish, and snakes. Undisturbed, the eggs undergo rapid changes. Through the wonder of time-lapse cinematography, days have been shortened into seconds. of one to two weeks, tiny tadpoles begin to develop, wriggling, spinning, and finally fighting to break out of their jelly cocoon. Less than one week later, the survivors have begun nibbling on water plants and scraping green slime from rocks and sticks. All heads and tails, the young tadpoles look more like fish than frogs. In their pond environment, other creatures compete for food, like the freshwater snail. The lacy hydra casts its tentacles about searching for small crustaceans and worms to sting and devour. The developing tadpoles, or polywogs, as they're sometimes called, are unrelenting in their search for food, using small sucker-like mouths to feed and breathe. At three weeks, the leopard frog tadpoles are dwarfed by the nearly six inch long bullfrog tadpoles. Regardless of size, they're vulnerable to a host of predators, like the great blue heron. pond is also a nursery for the offspring of the dragonfly. They too develop underwater, spending a year as nymphs. The ghoulish looking crayfish is far less a threat to the young tadpole than other creatures like fish, 
and predatory water insects. Giant water bugs are enormous in relation to most other water insects and very dangerous. Once caught, the chances of escape are slim. The water bug plunges its deadly beak into the flesh of the tadpole and begins to suck its lifeblood away. Tadpoles that do manage to survive go on to make a miraculous transformation. Hormones trigger secretions from the thyroid, causing radical changes in body structure. Subtle at first, in the end, the metamorphosis is startling. At about six weeks, the leopard frog tadpole stops eating. It begins to absorb its tail as food. Tiny hind legs begin to grow at the base of the shrinking tail. Lungs are beginning to develop. The rate of the metamorphosis varies, based largely on the temperature of the water. The front legs develop under the skin and then break through. The head begins to reform, and the tadpole begins to look less like a fish and more like a frog. The tail shrinks until it's only a memory and the frog begins its ascent into the world of blue sky, cattails, and new discoveries. Transformed into the somewhat odd but endearing prince of the pond. With a lily pad for a throne, it has become a key link in the complex world around it, a principal predator of its environment. In contrast to their lives as vegetarian tadpoles, frogs are carnivorous predators. They hunt by sight, relying on sharp color vision and a nearly 360 degree view of their surroundings. Unlike most animals, the frog's tongue is fastened at the front rather than the back of its mouth. It's covered with a sticky substance that adheres to its prey. The long, lightning-fast tongue strikes out and snaps back with the hapless cricket securely glued down. The leopard frog is the most widely distributed amphibian in North America. In the Adirondacks of upstate New York, it lives alongside families of river otters. Young otters searching for food will make a meal of frogs, if they can catch them. Frog's evasive zigzags lead to the temporary safety of the river, but the alert parent takes up the chase where her inexperienced offspring left off.
If the leopard frog is the prince of the pond, then the bullfrog is the king. At eight inches in length, this amphibian giant can make a snack out of nearly anything it can fit down its throat. Bullfrogs hunt by lying in wait, then leaping forward as their prey passes. The powerful, sticky tongue will plunge out and wrap around the unsuspecting prey. The frog will usually submerge and swallow. Insects, mice, snakes, smaller frogs, even birds may fall victim to the voracious bullfrog. The patient frog moves slowly to another part of the shoreline. This time, its stealth pays off. The finch's movement triggers the attack. Once caught, the bird has virtually no chance of escape. All frogs and toads retract their eyes or blink when they swallow to help push food down their throats. A transparent inner eyelid closes from the bottom up, protecting the eye but letting the frog see underwater. In this case, the bullfrog's casual blink looks more like a self-satisfied wink to me. Tetons and nearby Yellowstone National Park are home to some of North America's most spectacular wildlife. But not all of this area's animals are spectacular or glamorous or even pretty by our standards, yet every species is critical to the survival of the others. These homely salmon flies are an important food source for Yellowstone's fish and birds and little leopard frogs. Herpetologists that's what people who study frogs and toads are called. Herpetologists have proven that frogs are attracted to light and may even try to jump repeatedly through a piece of white cardboard. Light, shimmering river water is just too good to resist. Look before you leap 
is not an adage, this adventuresome little water plopper follows. Somehow, the frog prince escapes, free to reign another day in this beautiful wet world. Because frogs and toads lead double lives, both on land and in water, they're extremely sensitive to pollution. Even in protected wetland habitats, amphibian populations are declining at an alarming rate all over the world. Experts contend that acid rain, pesticide pollution, and ultraviolet radiation may be causes of their rapid disappearance. Global conservation efforts may be needed to ensure the survival of the Prince of the Pond. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.